Now, I don't know about you, but I find certain soul-collecting vehicles of torture set in a dark place a little bit on the daunting side. Yeah, yeah, get good, scrub. I am familiar. Maybe I'll hop on the number 666 to yarn in one day, but currently I'm ready to alight at an earlier stop. Let's ring the bell here and enter death's door. I had an appetite for a harder game, but I wasn't exactly starving. I was prepared to play Acid Nerve's isometric experience super casually, almost to passively put in a few hours here and there, where I would be happy to put it down if I found it was too challenging or it didn't tickle my fancy. I wasn't even too bothered in having it appear on this list, in all honesty. But nicely, to my surprise, the more I played, the more I was dragged in. The sense of adventure and progression was overthrowing any anxiety I had about its difficulty. It is a difficult game, especially early on, but each encounter a new area and new things to find kept me going, all the way to 100%. And I very rarely play a game to 100%. Death's Door is an action RPG that takes its influences from old school Zelda's, Metroidvanias and from software titles. You play as a cute little crow, a reaper who works for the Reaping Commission, a delightfully drab and grey office that employs crows to collect the souls of those who pass on to the afterlife. This is your hub, and as you find more doors in the world, you gain easier access to and from the handful of locations. Our crow uses a number of weapons, upgrades and tools, which includes various slashies and smashies, magic, a hookshot, bombs and a bow and arrow to bring down creatures and monsters that populate the world. At the start, our Corvid friend is tasked to collect a number of giant souls, after one of his commissions is taken by the curmudgeoned Grey Crow. Claiming the three giant souls will open the titular Death's Door, but to get to them requires travelling to each corner of the world. These travels culminate in a boss fight where you meet the entities connected to the souls. You also meet on your way the actual boss of the commission. Its playstyle is quick. Whilst fighting, you learn to get into a flow and rhythm, learning the moveset of your enemies, knowing when to strike and when to dodge roll. This becomes fundamental in gaining an advantage because you initially don't get a lot of hit points. This technique is useful for fighting bosses as they can be quite brutal. Even mini boss fights could definitely challenge my reflexes. Contemporaries would have a health bar above enemies' heads, but Death Store is a bit more dynamic than that. As you deal out the pain, enemies start to crack, with red light emanating from within. This serves as a signal that you're almost there, just a few more hits to go. And this is what urged me on to continue. Numerous times I succumbed to defeat, but I knew I was still moving forward. Just one more go, I would tell myself. It was remarkably addictive and super satisfying when the coup de grace was dealt. You're even egged on by the game to actively attack to refill your ability bar. I really enjoyed the enemy design and boss fights. There is a good variety in encounters as you progress. I particularly enjoy battling waves of enemies in the avarice levels hidden within a mimic used as a test of skill to unlock new abilities that open up new locations and fight styles. Death's Door is just a really well-made game that plays well, has good pacing and is a steady challenge. I love the art style with its muted palette, accented with neon swishes and glowing projectiles as you fight on through its world. The locations are full of whimsy, shortcuts and secrets hiding in every corner. The soundtrack made up of wistful pianos, delicate strings, folky woodwinds and epic crescendos is utterly gorgeous, it does a grand job of matching the game and its atmosphere beat for beat. Tonally, the game has its ups and downs. It's sombre because the theme of death is omnipresent, there's no escaping that. But there are also times when the mood is lifted with sparks of humour when you interact with a band of amazing characters, some of which are definitely human. And dare I say it, even though it's not an easy game, it is quite cosy. Perfect for a rainy autumn day. And it all comes together in a very neat 25 hour or so package before the credits roll. But, almost poetically, the end isn't the end. There was still stuff to do. And yes, a lot of it is a glorified scavenger hunt, but I enjoyed spending time in the world that I really didn't mind, especially to unlock more secrets. It was a bit of a slog to find every seed and pot and every shiny thing, but I'm not ashamed to say I used a guide to help me. I wanted to see it all, to the very end and beyond. I've played games where the difficulty curve has given me a hard time and it leaves me with a completely different experience. Death's Door didn't do that. It felt like the game was working with me rather than against me, giving me more reasons to continue. 
You're not even punished by losing all of your hard-earned souls when you inevitably get downed, making it easier to pick up where you left off without having to trudge back through the levels just to upgrade your four stats. I suppose I would have liked to have played through a new game plus just to see how well I could have done with a full gear set, as later in the game you're not given many opportunities to fully use the skills you've acquired. I did play through the opening hour again to jog my memory and yeah it did feel like I effectively took on board what the game taught me. I've come away appreciating the mechanics of this type of playstyle as well. Although it could be a lot of repeating the same thing over and over again, it had a weird zen-like feeling to it, putting me into a zone until it just clicked with me. Maybe in the future I'll grab the brolly and go for the elusive platinum, but for now I think it's time to let our feathered friends rest in peace. <laughs>